all you fellow tiny housers and wannabe tiny housers. We finally got our build to lock up stage. Now it's taking longer than expected, but then hey, I'm in no hurry. I'm kind of retired, so really there's no rush. Uh, kind of think of though, everything I build is uh, different and, and takes quite a bit longer than expected. The house took about five years and the what I call uh, the Pizza Hut took probably two years, stretched to three years. That took some doing, I can tell you. Love to have people over and sit out there and eat homemade wood-fired pizza though. Okay, let's get on with the, our portable on skid build. I've made a comment before in previous videos on a decision to go with a portable on skids rather than a thou. Everyone is different with different agendas. The main issue for us was room, the amount of room. Um, the, our portable is almost a full meter wider than a thou, given that it's nine meters in length. Um, that gives us an extra nine square meters overall internal living space, which is huge compared to a thou. On top of that, the cost of a trailer alone, had we have gone that route, got us almost to lockup stage uh, where we are now. Now, of course, it doesn't account for, for my time, but then, you know, about 98% so far is mostly my labor. Now, the last video I threw together, if you watched it, uh, showed me getting the steel skids, uh, the steel floor joist, and the floors constructed. I've now gotten our tiny house, as you can see behind me, built to lock up. So let me walk you through. Throwing up the framework was a fairly simple process for me as when I was a lot, lot younger. Uh, we framed houses for a living. But look, it's an exciting part of the build and you start to see the actual building coming to life. Now I use treated pine H2 for the framing mainly because of the white ant issue in Australia. Now I learned this the hard way, just how bad that these little rascals here can be. Now it costs considerably more with the H2, but then what price do you put on peace of mind? For me, it was a no brainer. As for the bracing, now I probably overdid the bracing, but for me, I have a tendency to overbuild. And again, it gives me peace of mind, if nothing else. When it came to the construction of the roof, I used recycled timber. Now I already had it in my shed for the last 15 years or so, and yeah, I, I'm a bit of a hoarder, and I, I swear it'll come in handy someday, hon. Okay, that's what I keep telling the missus anyway. On the plus side, it just looks fantastic. Now this includes all the beams too. Most of this timber is what Aussies would call Oregon, but its real name is Douglas fir. But it just looks so good. It's a lot of work though. Now all the secondhand timber I had to size and dress. It takes a fair bit of time, but one of those things to think about if you're going to be using secondhand building materials. They're a lot cheaper most of the time. Be prepared for some extra work. Once the trusses were up, I simply nailed the internal roof cladding on before finishing the roof with the insulation and the corrugated iron sheeting. The internal lining that we did use uh, is what I call colonial pine boards. They're also called here, I think, shiplap pine lining. And usually they are made from radiata pine. Now our first choice for internal lining was to use CDF plywood. Uh, we thought by using CDF we could keep the cost, you know, right down. But from pricing other internal linings, and in particular the pine boards, they actually worked out a bit cheaper per square meter. There's quite a bit more work involved though. For us, the extra time spent installing each board was well worth it, as both my wife and I think the pine boards look so much nicer. We'll, we'll most likely use the same for the lining on the walls. Now, of course, you'll see that in the next video. Now, construction of the roof took me a lot longer again than I had anticipated. These days, I, I'm just not used to climbing up and down the ladders uh, like I used to uh, when I was a painter. Uh, couldn't slow me down in those days. Now, my next step was to put in the windows. This was a fairly simple and straightforward exercise, except for the fact that I purchased second-hand windows. The reveals had to be cut back to fit the thickness of the walls. And two of the windows were just plain aluminum, you know, that silvery look. So I had to clean those up and paint and paint them. If you don't already know it, there's a bit more work involved when using secondhand materials. But I found over the years, even with the extra attention that's required, I know we are miles ahead on outright cost. All the windows and the two wooden doors at the front uh, cost us about $600 all up. New would be several thousand of dollars, like in the order of $10,000 or so. So the missus and I are pretty happy with that. It pays to shop around at all the secondhand shops. Putting on the external corrugated cladding, uh, I found also to be an exciting part of the build. You know, it 
you, you know it's becoming waterproofed and warm and cozy inside. And simply, you're, you're making progress. Okay, it just gives you a, a good feeding all over. Now, as I, had some cladding, as I had some cladding at nine meters in length on the back wall, I got a friend to help me with installation. Now, we had all the external cladding up in just over a day. From that point, it probably took me another week to finish off all the little odds and ends. Uh, you know, the, the flashing and bits, the, the ridge capping, uh, pieces around the windows, and just other little odds and ends. So a big thanks to my friend Kent Revillian who helped out. Which brings me to this. My friend Kent and I have decided to become partners and build these for paying customers. Now we won't start that until sometime in the, uh, the new year, probably around March, April thereabouts. But we want to put out about two or three of these per year. And of course they will be built to our standard. Anyway, more on that at a later date. For now my next step is running the water lines, the gas lines and all the electrical wires and even those have already been put in, but I haven't taken many, um, I haven't taken any videos of doing that. Now I'll definitely uh, be making the next video of the progress with the internal lining, lining boards, uh, building and installing the kitchen, the stairs, and, and the floors. The finishing of all the timber will be a separate video, and that will also go onto my DIY painting channel. Now I hope you enjoyed this video, and, and better than that, I hope you got some inspiration to maybe even build one of these for yourself. And if so, happy building, have fun with it. They make the perfect, affordable start for a young couple. Until next time, I'm Rick. Stay safe. The next video should be out soon, but it'll take longer than expected, like everything else. So long for now, everyone.